Whether gaming enthusiasts these days are busy drooling over which multicolored LED peripheral they wish to purchase or defending the ones they currently own as the best and the brightest, it seems few individuals can deny the current drawing power of this particular fashion feature. And while these days one can find pretty much anything they could desire fitted with flashy color-changing LEDs, it seems like not that long ago we were still talking about how cool the changing color scheme on the PlayStation Moves remote was, which was incidentally pretty much the last and only good thing anyone ever said about it. Now, the invention of LEDs in general, or light emitting diodes, was a process that began only a few years after the turn of the 20th century, but didn't really see the light of day until a short time after Woodstock, when production costs and output capacities became more reasonable. And although many people today associate LEDs with the bright lights and colors that they produce, allowing them to generally outshine their predecessors or the incandescent light bulb, the irony is that most consumer grade products first utilizing these lights actually produced infrared waves that were completely undetectable by the human eye. These infrared diodes were commonly used in controllers of varying sorts, one of which many viewers today are likely thankful to have within arm's reach, as is evidenced anytime it becomes lost, the television remote. Actually, it wasn't until the mid 90s when further advances were made in our abilities to produce visible light that LEDs became feasible for use in things such as emergency equipment, televisions, and, well, just that regular lights. So while the construction of an average LED cannot be called greater than that of a traditional bulb, their reduced size, power consumption, and most importantly, savings make them a pretty tough competitor at the very least. Add to this their increased lifespan, about 3 to 20 times that of fluorescent or incandescent bulbs respectively, and it seems that LEDs have become a shiny champion among light sources. You see, instead of heating flimsy filaments which have been sheathed in a globe of ultra-durable baby-safe materials such as glass, LEDs use two oppositely charged diodes placed adjacently on an electrical lead inside a plastic lens which are then manipulated by way of a circuit board. The addition of current causes negatively charged electrons from one end to combine with positively charged holes from the other, leading the bonding electron to disperse energy in the form of visible photons. Until more recently, when manufacturers wanted to change the color of the light produced by an LED, they simply changed the plastic refracting bulb it was set in, leaving users who wished for conformity amongst all their products or those who wanted to create specialized lighting themes pretty much in the dark. That was until someone had the bright idea of placing three separate diodes, one in each red, green, and blue, within the same bulb. For those who may be unfamiliar with the trichromatic theory of vision, it basically states that the photoreceptor cones in our eyes come in one of three brands, which are based on sensitivities to long, medium, and short wavelengths. To experience the myriad of colors we see in the rainbow, our brains interpret these varying color signals and produce a multicolored image. Like many good inventions, RGB lighting is reverse engineered from its more complex complex biological counterpart and produces its effect by manipulating the intensity of the aforementioned three diodes independently, allowing the user to choose the desired color. So I guess that pretty much settles it then. Things with LED lights are awesome and that goes doubly for ones that are color changing. Well, for the most part, actually, yeah. It is worth noting, though, that the cost of an LED bulb versus a standard one can be significantly higher, and the monetary benefits often don't kick in until long, very, like, very long term energy savings and replacement costs have been factored in. Also, there are still some things LEDs don't do particularly well, like creating natural light spectrums for things like nursery operations. Speaking of light, you need it for reading, right? Wrong! With Audible.com, you can read with your ears, which is to say that you can listen to any number of their 150,000, actually more than that, audiobooks on demand. They have titles across all types of literature, including fiction, nonfiction, and periodicals, with bestsellers like Unbroken, a World War II story of survival, resilience, and redemption by Laura Hillenbrand, riding high in the charts at the moment. Audiobooks are great to listen to when you're driving, stuck in traffic, on the subway or bus, doing chores around the house, at the gym, doing errands shopping or pretty much whatever and for our audience members audible is offering a free audiobook 
to give you a chance to try out the service. So pretty much all you got to do is head over to audible.com slash techquickie, sign up for their club, which actually entitles you to discounts on further audiobooks every month in addition to the audiobook that you get every month as part of your membership, and give it a try. You get the first one free, like I said, and I guess that's pretty much all there is to it. Thanks, Audible. Thanks to you for watching. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike it if you thought it was putrid. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future fastest possibles, and mash that subscribe button if you haven't already.